what's going on terror squad it's not something i normally do on the channel but this is something that i promised to do on patreon and somebody was like you should not leave this on patreon Cause the thing about it is that the reason why i wanted to share these on on these stories on patreon only was because i didn't think that you guys generally would want to hear it so if if you was on patreon and you signed up for that tier you would get to hear these stories um but somebody a subscriber they said no you should post this on this these on youtube you know somebody might learn something from it because there are lessons to be learned in my stories and I also want you guys to get to know me a little bit better. That it's not just about me coming on here and, you know, just reacting, <laughs> you know, um, you know, so before we get back to our regular schedule programming, <laughs> let's take a breather and get to know Terabyte Reacts a little bit better. I'm going to be talking a lot, so I don't know if this one is going to be two parts also, because the last time it was a very, a harsh memory. It was a harsh memory. You know, I talked about in the, in my last video. If you have not seen that video, I will link it in the description for you guys. So you guys can go watch that one. If you have not seen it where I was talking about how, you know, when I was homeless and you know, it got to the point where I, I couldn't talk. I was crying so hard because it's it's always, well, it's not always like that. But when I go deep into it, remembering every kind of, you know, single detail of what happened and trying to express myself, I always end up crying like that because it was, it's a deep wound. It's a deep wound. I am no way near that anymore, but it's still like when, when I remember it, it really causes me to really you know, cry a lot, yeah, men cry, yeah, it happens, <laughs> but anyways, doesn't make me, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, a vagina, <laughs> anyways, if you want to call it that, does not, <laughs> you know, I am as much of an alpha male as any alpha male out there, I will tell you that straight up, but at one point, I was extremely beta, you know what I'm saying? I was never an incel. If you if you don't know what an incel is, I'm pretty sure most people know what an incel is, right? I was never an incel, but I was a beta male. You know what I'm saying? If you know those terms, if you don't know those terms, okay, um, look them up because I really don't want to put up definitions. I might put some definitions up for you guys so you guys, you know, kind of familiar with what I'm talking about, but that's not what I'm here to tell you guys today. This is just stump I'm just starting for the intro. But I will be talking. Um I will be editing this video though. Um for stuff that you know that I should cut off if there's any dead space or anything like that. Or any you know anything of the sort. So this story that I'm going to tell you guys today is basically why I am the person I am today in that specific area, as in who I date, the relationships that I have in my life, as in romantic-wise or sexual, um, the reason behind those things. So let me preface what I'm going into by telling you the type of person I am right now. Right. So, of course, um, some of you guys may may not have guessed it already, but I am in my 30s. Um, I am in my 30s and. I was got married, I would say pretty young, I, I, I want to say um, I want to say pretty, pretty young because, you know, according to, you know, statistics and stuff today, people are not getting married at that age anymore. And if they do, you know what I'm saying? It's not many. You get what I'm saying? Most couples are getting married in today. And is, I would say for the last probably maybe 10 to 15 years, you know, since the millennium started, you know, it's really more of 
30, late, late 20s, 28 to 32, people are getting, people are getting married. Okay. So I would say if you're going to put it at today's standard, I got married pretty early. I got married at um, 23 years old and I won't, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to tell you guys most of the story. I'm going to tell you as much as I can remember of instances and, and thing. And she's not here to defend herself against anything I'm about to say. So I want you to keep that in mind. This is from my perspective. I'm not here to bash that other person i'm not here to bash her i'm not here to speak bad about her but i am going to talk about certain things that i saw in the marriage and stuff that i don't do now and i would never get involved with someone if i see these signs about her or that person that i'm about to get involved with so the person i am today right um i would consider myself very strict in the people I date, the people I get involved with romantically and sexually. And the reason why I separate the two, because they're very, they're two very separate things in today's society. It is two very separate things. You know, um, you can't mix the two. You can't. And the thing about it is that what I want you guys to understand and what I'm going to try to teach you guys tonight, whether you're a woman, whether you're a man, you can learn something from what I'm saying to you guys tonight and what I'm trying to express to you guys. So when it comes on to me, I know I'm kind of, I'm, I'll get to, I'll get to around to my point. So just give me some time because I'm doing this off the dome. I'm doing this off the dome because I don't want you guys to feel like, you know what I'm saying? I sat down and I, you know, thought about this because I really have not really thought about it. It's the video. Um, it's raw, very raw. So you're getting my raw emotions of what I can remember. And as I go along, I'm going to, this is off the dome, right? So I am the type of person today that I am very strict. I don't take women out for for dinner and movie and stuff like that on first dates anymore. That is something I used to do. I don't do that anymore. All I do now is coffee. And furthermore, if that lady cannot pay for her own coffee, that's a red flag for me already. That's a red flag. Um, at that point, all I'm all I, I make one out of two decisions, either I am when I realize she can't pay for her own coffee. What I decide to do basically is that if she can't pay, that simply means that, okay, I'm going to end up paying for this in the long run. Right. And also my other decision is that this is not going to go anywhere. Right from here or you know i might say you know what let's see how easy it is to get what six okay right i'm trying to choose my words carefully because this is on youtube and i you know you know i don't really care if it get monetized or not really but at the same time i'm trying try my best not to say anything you know because youtube already don't want to pay you no money for nothing so <laughs> whatever so so yeah so decisions decisions right so that's the kind of person i am now where i choose very wisely um because i'm at that age now where i have and I want you guys to understand, you, you guys, I should say men out there to understand um, what men tend to not understand about themselves or what I never realized about myself before was that I am the prize. And 
I want you to take this from 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 my perspective and you might not experience the same things as I have I have not gone into any details about any of the other stuff yet right uh, or how my marriage went which is I'm going to get into it in a second but I do want you to understand who I am today and why I made the decisions that I make my priorities career my career number one right number two my family my mom whoever you want to talk about my family and then my significant other whoever that person may be in that order and i'm gonna tell you guys why because a lot of times people people tend to you know want to come down on you and i know a lot of women is going to say no your woman should come before your family why isn't she second after your career some of them might go even further to say why is your woman not important than your career i'm gonna tell you guys why you should never make a woman more important and i'm gonna give you the example from my ex from my experience as i said this might not be your experience but this is my experience and a lot of my, you know, male friends and guys that I hang on, we experienced basically the same thing when we were in our 20s and we, we were married. All of us are not divorced, but a lot of my guy friends are going through the same things now, right? So I want you guys to understand something. I love women. You know what I'm saying? I'm never going to stop loving women. You know? But there has to be a point when every man got to ask himself, is it really worth it? You get what I'm saying? Is it really worth it to put yourself out there and get basically abused? You know, in that in those arenas it's like it's like it's really a jungle out there because you don't know at some it's like you don't know what to expect and if you do know what to expect you feel like you're getting robbed because the system is against you no matter how you look at it it's not a win-win situation when you're in a relationship anymore it's just not it's a lose-lose for men in so many ways because really i you know just today i was talking to someone right just today i was talking to someone and was actually a girl she's 18 years she was she's 18 years old and i was trying to explain to her right how I feel about these things. I was being very candid and very brutally honest because that's who I am now. I don't hide the truth from, from people. Facts over feelings in everything. Facts over feelings in everything. I'm a very logical guy, more logical today than I was, say, 10, 15 years ago. Extremely logical person. Like, I, I look for logic... And I analyze pretty much everything that comes across my eyes, right? And I analyze the shit out of what people say, and I try to understand, and then I apply logic to it, because most of the time people just say shit, and most of the time they're not realizing that they're not making any sense, because logic doesn't work that way, you know, because they're speaking based on emotion, and this goes for men and women. Women mostly, because, you know, women talk, they're emotional pretty much all the time, <laughs> right? So, um, you know, as much as they try to dispute this, is that is it's just a fact. And we get it. You have, is very few women that I've met in my lifetime, and this includes my family, that are logical i'm telling you i will try my best to explain things logically to my own mother sometimes 
And she'd be like, but this and but that. But I'm like, mom, when you look at it this way, it makes sense, doesn't it? And she'll say yes. And then she'll be like, but you know, nothing pisses me off more these days when people do that. Because I'm like, you literally just admit to it making sense. But there always got to be a but because you're not right. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So let me get deep into the story. So now that you kind of understand, as I go along, I'll explain something more about myself and who I am today as we go along and I tell you this story. I know it's 15 minutes in and I haven't gotten to the real meat of the matter yet, but I do want to wanted to do that because I want you guys to understand where my perspective is coming, where I am today versus where I was when I got married, right? So... <sighs> If I should put it in words, a couple of words, I would say I was, I, you know, I use, I, even on this channel, sometimes you'll hear me say, I'm a hopeless romantic, right? I still believe I am, but I'm a different type of hopeless romantic. But back then, I was as hopeless <laughs> as you can get when I actually look back at it and realize how bad it was, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, okay, so I met my dang girl. I actually met her in church. This is something that you guys don't know about me. I'm not religious, but I've gone to church pretty much my entire life. I don't go as much today as I used to because what I do, as I said, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I still do the things, but I don't really like go to the building anymore. If you want to put it like that, I don't really go like that anymore. Um, as I used to like religiously go like every Sunday, right? Um, so I met her at church, you know, nice, nice young lady when I met her and I was, you know, you evaluate at that time. If you guys don't know, I, I've talked about it on the channel before, you know, maybe not in depth, but I, you guys should know by now that I am Jamaica of Jamaican descent. I am from Jamaica. I, I spent little, almost, I would say 18 years of my life, first 18 years of my life in Jamaica. And then I migrated to the United States lived in New York for two years where I was homeless for basically half of that time. And then I moved to Miami when um, my sister came and got me in New York. I think, as I said, I'm going to link the story. You can go watch that, you know, whenever you want to and get that part of my life. I'm not going to talk about it again. Start crying. <laughs> okay. So met her. You know, I let her know how I, how I, well, but I never really told her how I felt. I was just like, you know, how, you know, young guys, you don't know, like, sometimes you really don't know how to approach somebody you re, you're really into. And I was that type of person. I wasn't as assertive as I am today to be able to sit in front of a camera and talk about stuff like this. You know what I'm saying? Back then I was confident, but not as confident as I am today. You know, but when it comes on to approaching women, I usually use the the childish kind of approach, if you understand what I mean. Like, I'll give them hints. You get what I'm saying? I'll give them hints. Like, I'll have casual conversation, but I'll never bring up anything like, you know, you know, can I have your number or take you out? Like, eventually, usually what happens, like, this shit never just, it never worked, <laughs> okay? For Let's just... <laughs> It just never worked, okay? So she basically had to to basically ask me, do you like me or something? And I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I gave her the opportunity to realize what was going on. So, you know, to put it nicely. <laughs> so um, you can see by the, the smile on my face, just remembering it, that everything happened genuinely. You know what I mean? Um, there are some things that took place during this relationship that I that I cannot talk about because then it would be 
revealing information that I shouldn't, you know, um, medical stuff. So I'll be very vague about it. I'll be very vague about that stuff. So just be prepared. I'll tell you when I'm being vague about it. So, you know, okay. So, um, so I won't mention what exactly it is, but I'll kind of give you an int so you can figure it out for yourselves. But I cannot say it here because that would be, trust me, if she, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if she gets a hold of this video, you know what I mean? Like it could spiral out of control again for me and believe you me when i say i do not want to see this girl's face for the rest of my life if 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 that happens <laughs> you know um if if it so happens that i never see her again i would be a very happy man <laughs> you know but i'll tell you how i got to this point where i'm where i would say something like that but as i said things started out very genuine you know what i'm saying um we went out on dates you know, things escalated, you know what I'm saying? We made out, you know, but we never, we never went the distance as in, we never went full on. I mean, some people, um, determine, you know, breaking that, vibe. like for me, you know, because we were going to church and stuff, you know, the whole sex before marriage thing, you know what I'm saying? We took that very seriously, but we still fool around. You get what I'm saying? Like we still, we still fooled around, you know, we still made out, we still kissed and stuff. Cause I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it. I couldn't hold out. You know what I'm saying? You're young. You, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's very hard for you, but I could have, could control myself. There's plenty of times where we could have went the distance, like in the car, in the house when nobody was paying attention, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's plenty of times and we had self-control to not go to distance. It was frustrating as hell, but we didn't. So I'm setting those things apart. This is all stuff that happened before the marriage. So the reason why I was telling you guys where I was from to bring back that point is to let you guys know that at that point in, in time, I was not um, exactly legal in this country yet. I didn't have my papers. My mom was had filed for me and it was taking a while. So at that point, as I said, I was 23 or 22. No, when I met her, I was 20. I want to say 22 when I met her. 23 is when I got married, right? So... I want to say somewhere maybe about to turn 22 I met her and you know we hit it off we hit it off um we discussed we talked about a lot we we music you know what I'm saying was something that we had in common we loved the same type of music she had some odds like she didn't necessarily like hip hop that much but she got into it because of me, you know, she was more into more soulful music, um, some, some stuff that I was never interested in, but because of her, you know, I listened to it and I grew to love it also. So we shared very similar interests. So it was very easy for us to talk about most things, you know, very easy for us to talk about most things. And we hit it off, man. We hit it off. And as I said, you know, she realized the problem. And, and if you guys are immigrants and migrated to this United States, you know that, you know what I'm saying? Like when you get married, things go through way faster when you, when you, when you are filed for, you're filing for residence and citizenship. I, I would say residence, not citizenship. Citizenship is totally different from having residence. So to, to be a permanent resident of the United States, it goes through way faster if you get married. It takes sometimes, you know, less than six months. You know, by six months, you should have a work permit. And, you know, in the space of another month, you should be set and ready to go. Right? And ready to be able to work. 
legally and all that stuff. Now, mind you, I was, I couldn't, I didn't work because everybody was like, listen, don't risk it because you might work and you might get deported because of that. So just, just take it easy. So at that point in my life, I wanted to work. Now, don't get me wrong. I was doing little odd jobs for cash and stuff like that, but nothing legitimate like working anywhere where it was. I was doing little stuff, helping people. You get what I'm saying? Cause I'm, I'm, I'm basically a nerd. So I was doing stuff for people, you know, going to houses and stuff, fixing computers and stuff, making my little money here and there, you know what I'm saying? Not just sitting on my ass, but I wasn't like going to a company where, cause you know, companies that pay you under the table, that's, it's bad. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? It's bad for them. And a lot of times people get picked up and deported from those places. So for me, it was just like people, we, you know, people know people want their computers fixed, little things like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, game systems, you know what I'm saying? I'll just pop by and, you know, charge them a, a, a cash fee and stuff like that. If you want to consider that work, work well, it's work. It's little odd jobs. I call it odd jobs at the time. You know, every now and then I still do have clients from, from, from that, that I used to do. So, you know, they'll call me every now and then and say, can you come and take a look at this? And I'll just do it for free. You know what I'm saying? So, because that's not what I do anymore. Um, but they do call me up sometimes. They say, can you come take a look at it? And I'll charge them nothing. You know what I'm saying? Cause sometimes it's just as simple as just people just forget to plug shit in. It's crazy. But yeah, getting back to the point, my, so we kind of expedited everything. You know what I'm saying? We realized that because I told her, I said, listen, if you want to wait, we could wait because I don't have a problem waiting until my stuff go through. Because one of the worst fears for me was for her to think that I got married to her for, as we call it, a green card, right? I never wanted her to feel that way. I would say, listen, I can wait until what my mom had filed for. I can wait for it. Cause it was, it, 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 we had gotten word that it's time. They're going to start processing my stuff from that filing. But she was like, no, I'm ready. I want you to, you know what I'm saying? To have your stuff. So let's plan the wedding, get married and Let's expedite everything because you need to be set. You need to, you know, need to be working, all of this other stuff. So I was like, cool, let's do it. So it was an agreement, right? It was an agreement. And I want you to keep this in mind because it did come up later in the marriage very often, <laughs> right? So I'm telling you guys the whole story. So I want, I want you guys to sit down and relax because I know this is not necessarily entertaining, but it is a good, this is a damn good story. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that much because this was five years of my life and it's hard to do it to tell you all that happened in one video, but I'm a, I'm gonna give you guys the bullet points that doomed the marriage. So I'm a fighter. <laughs> I'm a fighter and I fight for what I want. I've always been that way. And because of my strong belief in marriage at the time, don't have such a strong belief in it anymore. Um, but because of my strong belief in marriage, I fought for my marriage, man. When I say, and I'm going to tell you guys instances, you're not going to believe me, but I'm going to tell you guys anyway. <laughs> You're probably not going to believe why I'm not still married today after I finish telling you these things because you're going to wonder. And as I said, this is all coming from my perspective, because if you hear things from her, you might hear some you might hear things that are different. So you might hear the same shit and be like, girl, you're dumb. <laughs> but, but in any case, there were circumstances in these in this marriage. And this is where I'm going to start being a little vague about things which was the biggest bullet points which should have been discussed before anything took place. Any, you know what I'm saying? Any nuptials, if you want to call it that. Any marriage took place, it should have been discussed, but it wasn't discussed in detail. What I was hearing was that, you know how somebody will tell you, you know, they get sick sometimes. 
Now, telling somebody you get sick sometimes, as naive as I am and, and as in love as I am with this woman, how do you expect me to take that? I, I'm not going to take it super serious because I'm like, okay, you get sick sometimes. Everybody does. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and me and my naiveness, I'm 20 something years old. I don't know anything about you, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you need to pull out the papers, show me this, the, the, show me this thing on the internet or something, you know, but nothing got into the marriage and found out how deep this rabbit hole goes. And boy, is it a rabbit hole, right? So this became an issue because this started to happen about okay so when before a little bit before my papers went through i'm talking about like six seven months into the marriage so basically i got married in may and by september my stuff was ready but the lawyer he needed something. There was a bench warrant. I know, as I said, if you guys want the whole story of the stuff that happened in New York, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this in that in that video. I'm pretty sure I mentioned it in, in that video. If I didn't, I'll tell you now. Um, but what happened was there was a bench warrant out for me in New York. And this was because I jumped to turnstile. I spent a couple of days. I got caught. And I spent like a weekend in jail. Right? There's a freaking. It's a misdemeanor. But because it's the weekend. The courts are not open. I would have spent probably less than 12 hours in jail. But because it was like a Friday. You have to spend a whole weekend in jail. And see a judge on Monday. To get out of jail. It's crazy. I know. <laughs> but that's just how the system is right because judges don't work on weekends <laughs> you know you know they're government employees government employees in the united states don't work weekends they don't work saturday sundays so you have to wait all weekend in jail that wasn't a fun time but i had to do it right i don't think i told the entire thing but uh, maybe i i didn't mention it but yeah, so there was a bench warrant out because I was homeless at the time, right? So because I was homeless at the time, I couldn't do the community service. So there was a bench warrant out for me because I didn't do the community service. So I had to fly to New York to take care of this, right? So a week before, I, no, it wasn't a week. It was like it was like a, it wasn't it was close to a week maybe a lot like four to five days before i had to leave to go to new york to go take care of this bench warrant and do the community service and you know come back home to be i had to because if i didn't take care of it they could have found grounds to not give me my papers my green card right so i had to go take care of it the lawyer told me listen I, cause he, he asked me about what happened in New York and I told him, so he called the district attorney in New York to find out if there's anything open, you know, uh, on me, right? G gave the district attorney the, the number and everything. And he found out about the bench warrant. He said, listen, you got to go take care of this. I can't file until I can't dear, you know, you can't go to the interview and not take care of this. Right? So. I had to go take care of it. So four to five days before I left, my wife got sick. So I'm looking at this sickness. <laughs> and at the time, I was not smiling because I'm like, is this what you guys are talking about? I was crying my eyeballs out because I'm like, how could you guys not tell me how bad this is? Show me some pictures. Show me a study. Something could have gotten me prepared for this. Nobody told me. Everybody was just saying, you know how black people are. If there are any black people out there that knows when people are sick, 
And they, you know how they cover shit up and don't tell you exactly what's going on because they don't like doctors or something? Something as serious as this. And you don't tell your partner that you're planning to marry that this is how serious it gets? I was frightened out of my mind. I'm talking about sleepless nights. And as you and, and, and as you guys realize, I'm being very vague because, as I said, I can't tell you exactly what it is because we're not married anymore. You get what I'm saying? So it's none of my business. She could sue me if she comes across this video. And I'm telling you guys what it is. You get what I'm saying? Even though you guys don't know who she is, she could still... I'm just not going to mention it. So just just understand that it's it's a very severe sickness, okay? It comes and it goes. So I'm not even going to tell you guys the symptoms or anything. I don't want to mention anything that could possibly put me in a bad spot. So just understand how vague I am right now. So this is bullet point number one. Now, because I am a loving husband, I, I sanctioned my mom and my sister and I asked them, I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Should I go to New York still and take care of this thing or should I stay? Now, I know maybe there's a couple of women out there that's probably going to say you should have stayed. That's not important, but it was important. Because it's not something I could have put off. Because if I had put it off, this bench warrant, they're like, listen. If there's a month, if a month passes, 30 days, and he does not come and take care of this bench warrant. This is what the DA told my, my lawyer that was taking care of my immigration stuff. If he doesn't show up in 30 days, we're going to consider him basically a fugitive <laughs> because basically I had, a, there was a bench warrant out and I crossed state lines. It was a serious, this misdemeanor of just jumping over a turnstile. If you guys don't know what a turnstile is, a turnstile is basically like go, getting on the train without paying. So you jump over the thing that you're supposed to walk through. That's the turnstile. So I jumped over it to get on the train because I had to, I wanted to sleep on the train because the trains are usually warm and it's really cold in the winters in New York. So that was the thing. I, I had to go take care of it. You know what I'm saying? If I missed it and stayed, she was going to be sick for months, which she did. Right? So my mom said, listen, me, and this is why now. I cannot prioritize anybody over my family. My family comes. When I say they come to the rescue, <laughs> you guys don't understand how much I love my family, man. My mom and my sister, my my oldest, not my oldest sister, but the one that's here in, you know, in Miami with me. She, she said, listen, we'll check on them from time to time and help the mom out with her. And I said, I'm going to go take care of this. And you guys have to keep me updated. Have to keep me updated. You know, so I called every day. Some, you know what I'm saying? Like all day, 10 times when she could talk to me. I talked to her. You know. So. It went and it went and went. I was stressing the hell out when I was in New York. Like stressed out. Out of my mind. Stressed out of my mind trying to do things to not use I was you know I played I, I will start to play like a video game and something I have to put it down which is something I don't usually do I was so stressed out and worried about her because it hit me like a ton of bricks I didn't know what to do I'm like this is what I'm you know I've, of course I'm gonna ask myself the question is this what I'm gonna have to deal with for the rest of my life or for the rest of her life Whatever it is, because I'm planning to stay in this marriage. I'm not planning to leave. You get what I'm saying? Because to, I just made vows. I just made vows. 
And as I said, believing so strongly in marriage, I couldn't, I, I just couldn't get up and just leave. Right. So I got <laughs> to see the, the, the bad part. I got to see the, the, the bad part. But second bullet point that I'm going to add in there, as I said, the highlights, <laughs> the second bullet point was she was extremely, extremely, I can't even stress it enough, <laughs> extremely ungrateful when she comes back to, right? When she's quote unquote normal again, right? So, extremely ungrateful to everybody that nursed her back to normalcy, if you want to call it that, right? Still being vague, right? So, that's where. Things kind of rumped up where I started to see things that I did not like about her. Mind you, we're still trying to make a life. I'm still trying to. I'm like, okay, things are better again. Let's move on. Let's start to plan our lives. Blah, blah, blah. Now I can work. Blah, blah, blah. Right. So we made plans at the time we were living at her mom's house, married wasn't for long though because we had said you know we're gonna make plans and then we'll move out move into an apartment or something buy a house whatever the situation is we made plans because i was really getting tired of being in the mom's house too of course i'm a married man but as i said situations didn't allow me to be able to be out there on our own from the get-go you get what i'm saying so situations, you just got to deal with what you're in right now and then move on to better things. You know, you learn, learn to be humble sometimes because situations will humble you sometimes, you know, and you just got to deal with it and then move on later. Right. So. Um, so, yeah, we moved out, got our own apartment. And that when that's when I really started to see <laughs> who the hell I got married to. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Um, it was not great. <laughs> you know, to put it in a nutshell, it was not great. Things really got to a point where I was like, in my marriage, there was there were no complaints about, I never complained about sex, but sex was an issue. Sex, it wasn't an issue when we have it, as in the action of sexual intercourse was not an issue. You get what I'm saying? Like when we do have sex, it's great. She never complained. I've asked because I'm not afraid to ask. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And as a married couple, you have you have to know. Both of you have to know. You get what I'm saying? Both of you have to know if each other is not enjoying each other so you can switch things up, do something different, be spontaneous fuck her in the kitchen, whatever, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, so, um, as I said, that was never an issue, but as I said, it wasn't, there was an issue for me, because I wasn't, I'm, I was young, hormones are kicking, as I said, I'm only 23 years old, peak, sexual condition you know what i'm saying i'm working out we both go into the gym and junk you know what i'm saying like you have peak sexual condition but for some strange reason i felt like i just wasn't having enough sex so started watching porn and she didn't understand why I was hiding it. I was trying to hide it because I was like, I don't want her to know because I don't want her to feel any sort of way about it because you know what I'm saying? So we did have the conversation eventually, but she never blamed herself. Of course she wouldn't. <laughs> what am I thinking? You know what I'm saying? Of course she wouldn't. Of course she wouldn't blame herself because, you know, nothing is ever her fault. 
<laughs> so yeah, that's the kind of marriage I was in. Nothing was ever her fault. Everything was always my fault, no matter what. You know what I'm saying? I I, I was the the um at one point she was working and I and I wasn't and I was doing everything at the house. I cleaned cleaned the you know, cleaned the apartment. Um, she was at that point, I'm not afraid to, to tell you guys this. She was the breadwinner at the, at the time, right? I was trying to find something substantial for me to do at that point. I had just gotten the, the green card and everything I was still looking for a job. Even back then jobs were hard to find. You know what I'm saying? Especially for someone like me that, you know what I'm saying? Like don't have prior experience. I wasn't schooled here. So it's tough to find entry-level jobs, you know, things are a lot better now. Back then it was like, you know, Obama, it was like Obama came into power and stuff like that. So a lot of jobs was starting to, it was starting to get a little bit better, not great. The economy was still crappy, but, um, but yeah, eventually I did find a job, you know, but I'm saying like. I was doing the things that I think uh, if you were a stay-at-home parent or a stay-at-home part of the, the the mom or whatever it is, you get what I'm saying? Whatever you want to call it or what society wants to call it. If you if your if you, if your spouse is out working, whether it be the man or the woman, you get what I'm saying? Whichever spouse that stays home got to take care of home. She was I was waking up in the mornings, making her breakfast, packing her lunch and stuff like that, making dinner, stuff like that. Sometimes she would cook too. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes she would come home. She was like, hey, I want to cook this for you, blah, blah, blah. She wanted to cook too, so she participated. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes she'd come home, I'll rub her feet if she had a long day, stuff like that. I was doing the utmost because I felt like I wasn't doing <laughs> what I was supposed to be doing as a, as a man in the relationship. So I was trying to make up for that. It's an ego thing with men. Don't get it twisted, okay? You get what I'm saying? Like, you know, because I'm not I'm not built for stay at home. I, you know, I'm driven to be out there. So the fact that I was, it was frustrating as hell, but I made, I made the most of it, but she never made it easy. So as I said, I got into porn and because I wasn't getting it enough from her because most times she came home, she was too tired. And as I said, I'm not blaming her for this. I never blamed her. I never said it's your fault. Or anything like that. Circumstances just didn't allow. You get what I'm saying? Like she she would come home and she's extremely tired. I'm talking about somebody that's leaving home. 7 o'clock in the morning. And not getting back home to like 8 o'clock at night. So it's hard for me to look at her and be like. Hey you should be ready. I'm at home all day. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So I never blamed her. I just found a way to cure the urges. But it never sit well, sat well with her when she found out about it. You get what I'm saying? And she never said, hey, you know, uh, you know, as I said, it, it was never her fault, but she never took any responsibility for it. She could have took a little bit of it and just said, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She could have said, maybe I should have, you know, kind of, you know, at least, you know what I'm saying? Try to give you a release or, you know what I'm saying? A little sucky sucky you know what i mean <laughs> something you know what I'm that, i just wanted to hear her say something like that would have made me feel better would have made me feel better about the situation because at that point i'm young i i felt at that point now that i'm looking back i'm saying this but at that point i was looking at it like we're young you get what i'm saying we're young we supposed to be all over each other because as I said, she never had any complaints when we were doing it. There was never any complaints about that. You know what I'm saying? Because I was spontaneous as hell. I'm the type of person. I was walking up. I was walking up behind her. You know what I'm saying? I was walking up behind her. She'd be cooking. I'm like, damn, you girl, you sexy as hell to go behind her. You know what I'm saying? Grab them tatters. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? So... I'm just saying, like, I'm that type of person when it comes on to a sexual experience, so, 
I'm I'm very spontaneous with it. You get what I'm saying? So I was just always all over her and she never complained about it. But as I said, it's tough. It was a tough situation when it comes to that. And that's what how I got into porn. And, you know, as I said, she found out about it. She wasn't happy. You know, she kind of like, oh, you have no self-control and all of this other stuff. You know, and it wasn't cool. It was not cool to hear that. I'm going to be honest with you guys. It, it was not cool to hear that. It wasn't fun <laughs> to hear that about yourself. Um, and I took those things to heart. I really did. And it got to a point where, so, so let me just get to, you know, the other, but those were the main, the, those were the main bullet points moved out and things kind of got worse when we got our own place. Um, so some, some of that, the whole sex thing was, as I said, but what was the burden the most was that stress is a trigger for her. So it's, it's worse. <laughs> stress, stress was a trigger. She did not like any type of stress whatsoever piled on top of the fact that she's super antisocial and have no friends. So it was just me. <laughs> she had zero for anybody that tried to be friends with her. She would have a problem with them. She was extremely antisocial. And I'm, I'm not talking about like, I'm not talking about like a person that does, doesn't like, like she just, she, she will tell you, I'm a people, I'm like people, per I'm like, I'm a people person because I will go out and I will make friends. You don't make friends. You get what I'm saying? Anybody that tries to be your friends, you find a reason to not associate with this person. Even if this person genuinely likes your character and wants to be friends with you, want to be around you. You will find something to get rid of that person. Trust issues, everything. Sometimes I wonder why the hell she got married in the first place. I'm just being honest, man. So, as I said, there were things that happened. I'm talking about like his apartment. I painted the apartment. I did so many things to that place, man. Just remembering it, just to make her feel like it's a home you know what i'm saying even though it wasn't a house i just made it feel like a home you know this was the first time she ever lived on her own i've lived on my own before before that so it wasn't for long but at least i had a little bit of experience of you know what to do on your own to make your place feel like it's yours and stuff like that so um so all in all, right, all in all, I'm not ready to wrap up yet. We still got a good while to go. As I said, it's going to be a long one because I'm trying to short chain, put five, five years into a video. Um, so, so let's get to the, 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 the meat of the, the matter of what happened at the apartment. So, okay. She started to accuse me of cheating because she wasn't home and she was coming home and finding earring backs because she wears the funny thing about it is that she's the only person I know that doesn't have pierced ears <laughs> right she wears these you know she wears earrings but it's the ones where clip-ons and stuff like that so, um, mind you, it's an apartment. So she keeps finding airing backs in, in the apartment. She's like, oh, these are not mine. This is a pre-owned apartment. It could have been from somebody else, some the woman from somebody else or something like that. She, it, it was once she found it and she got suspicious that I was bringing womb people to the place when she's not there 
and stuff like that. And I, it just got to the, and none of this was happening. No, nothing. She just got so paranoid about everything. She's like, oh, then she started to talk about, oh, you just married me for, for papers. I'm like, listen, if I married you for papers, I would have did my time. And this is like probably like two going on three years into the relationship, right? I was like, so after I got my green card, why exactly didn't I leave? You want to explain that to me? I need you to explain that to me because I had, I did the probation time because there is a probation time, right? There is a probation time. There's a probation time after you get your green card by marriage that you have to stay into the relationship because if you if you get divorced, you you can void your green green card. They could take it away and deport you. So you have to stay in it for a while. It's like two or three years, which is way past the probational period. I'm like, why am I still here? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You want to explain that to me when she started all these accusations? I'm like saying to myself, why you think I'm staying? Why you think I'm putting up with your bullshit? You get what I'm saying? Why do you think I'm putting up with this if you think that I married you for a green card? Do I look like the type of person who loves stress? Because I don't. I hate stress. I hate it. You can't live without it, but when it gets to too much, which you are, you get what I'm saying? Why am I still here? That is the question I kept asking her. Why am I still here? I even one time I threatened, I put the scissors, I took the green card out of my wallet and I put the scissors to it. And I said to her, if you think that I married you for this shit, I'll cut this shit and want the fuck out of here. You get what I'm saying? Because I was that serious about my damn marriage. But she never got that. She never understood she never really understood how much I loved her. She never got that. Till this day, I still, I don't think she understands how much I was willing to do in that relationship. And I still haven't told, telling you guys the whole story yet. So, throughout all of this, um, I know, you know, looking back at what I'm about to tell you right now, it's not the greatest look for me, but I'm going to tell you guys anyways. And I know maybe if you guys comment, you know, if you guys comment on this, you're going to say this is where probably I messed up. Um, But an old friend came back into my life. It's a girl, of course. Nothing ever happened between me and her. We were just talking. We We just talked on the phone. That's all that happened. We just talked on the phone. But the thing that I liked about she... She's an old friend that I knew back from high school and stuff like that. We never went out. We never dated or anything like that, right? We just reconnected and she was listening. So she was listening. And guess what? My wife was not listening to anything I had to say. Nothing I said was valid or anything. So it was good to talk to somebody that was listening, right? Mind you, I am not hiding these conversations. I've literally been beside her talking to this girl on the phone and she's asked me who's on the phone and I'll tell her, listen, this is an, a high school friend. She's a girl and I let her know all of this. It was not a secret. So let me say that off bat. This was not a secret. She knew exactly what I was talking to. I've, I went on Facebook. I showed her pictures of the person I'm talking to. I was completely transparent with the situation but of course she's gonna get jealous because she realizes that you know what i'm saying um that i'm basically having constructive conversations with this person that, that i can't have with her but guess what every time i'm talking to you it's an argument so as I said, you guys are probably going to say you shouldn't have done that. That was wrong, blah, blah, blah. And when I look back at it, I say, maybe it was wrong. You get what I'm saying? Maybe it was wrong, but you guys might think that men don't need somebody to talk to too. At that point, I was living a life 
like I didn't have friends. She didn't like me having friends. So I didn't have any guy friends at the time. None. Everybody was cancer for her. So I literally almost cut off my entire family because of her. Right? I'm telling you guys, this is the truth. Almost cut off my entire family. When I tell you this girl is so antisocial, everybody bothers her. And at this point, when I look back at it, I'm like, so all she did was tolerate me. I don't, I, I believe at one point she did love me, but I think through the progression of the relationship, she started to become very antisocial towards me too. So, as I said, she didn't like that. So, I left. Or rather, I should say, she kicked me out of the apartment <laughs> that both of her names was on the least. For, on the least. But, you know, in America, you can't argue with these women about stuff like that. If the woman tells you to leave that, you better leave. They will call the cops and say you hit them. I didn't want to be in that. First of all, she was kicking me out. I called my sister and my sister was like, Ellis. You need to leave. Okay. You need to leave. Just leave. Just pack your stuff and get out. Come stay with me for a couple of days. And that's why I tell you. I'll never put another woman in front of my family. I'm sorry. For all you hopeful darlings out there. You'll never be second. <laughs> I'll never put another woman in front of my family never it's not gonna happen if you can't understand why i do that then i don't think you deserve to be with me so i left the apartment lo and behold the stress of me leaving she got sick again right she got sick again because for some reason she thought this wasn't going to affect her in a negative way. She's been sick times before that. Don't get me wrong. Not because I'm not mentioning it. This this kept happening. The same thing that happened when I went to New York. It kept happening throughout the years in little spurts here and, here and there. Right? So she got sick again. Guess what? She gets sick. She can't work, can't pay for the apartment, lose the apartment, had to move back with her, with her mom. Okay, so I'm chilling. I'm kicked out. I'm living somewhere else now. I'm, I'm on my own. I'm still married. I haven't filed for divorce. She hasn't filed for divorce. Everything is cool. I see every now and then. I actually went to help her move out of the apartment. Right, because she called me, she's like, I need help moving, blah, blah, blah. I didn't even discuss the situation or discuss anything. I'm like, listen, that's my wife. I'm going to go help her. I helped her to move back to her mom's house. Packed up the apartment and everything. Helped her move. None of my shit was there. I just went to help her move because she needed help. As I said, she's antisocial, so she has nobody else to call. <laughs> right? So... I went to help her because she's still my wife and I feel like I still had that obligation. So I went to help her. Um, the day, the final day that we finished move, um, we started talking again. We started talking again. Uh, pro this was probably around three or four months after. She kicked me out of the apartment, right? So, it's a crazy thing. It's, it's a crazy thing. Right? It's a crazy thing that happened. We started talking again. And 
I said to her, because at one point, I think her mom was telling me, telling her not to go live with me. And it just got to the point where I told her, I said, listen, I have my own place. Come live with me. You're my wife. You know, we love each other. Blah, blah, blah. So through all of what I went through with her, her kicking me out and all of that, I still forgave all of that shit. And brother brought her back to my humble abode where I own her name's not on the lease that I'm paying rent for. And it was a bigger place. I was actually renting a house at the time. Bigger place, everything. Now, this is where, <laughs> this is where things really, really got into perspective to me. I want you guys to hear me out right now. And any man that is in this situation, I want you, if you're in this situation, you listen to the sound of my voice right now. Listen to what I have to say after I tell you guys what this girl was doing right she was living she came to live with me after i told her come live with me she was living with me right and this girl she's not working i'm the one that's working i'm talking about i'm leaving the house at five in the morning i was doing construction at the time construction work hard ass fucking work you get what i'm saying Getting cuts on my arms every day because I'm working with steel. Working 15, 16 hour days. I come home. She's not working. I can't get a cooked meal. I can't have a cooked meal. Right? I still can't get enough set because I'm a freaking man. And at this point, I'm, what, 25, 26 years old, right? I'm still a man, and you know us, we're rambunctious as hell when we're young. We want sex all the damn time, right? You not doing shit now to tell me You get what I'm saying? You're not doing anything now to, as an excuse to be like, okay, you was working all day. You ain't doing shit now. So how can you possibly be telling me no sex? I come home. You should be ready and waiting. What are you talking about? Hmm? When I talked to her about it, she said, oh, there's still some resentment about what happened and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, you see, I've moved on from all of that. Why are you still in the past, man? Hmm? Why are you still in the past? We, we pass all of that. You're going to deprive me now because of some past stupid ass crap? Regardless of who was right or who was, or who was wrong, we're in a new place now. We've reconciled. Right? If I should give you guys, I'm not even going to, I'm not even, we're not, let's take the sex out of the picture. Just basic shit, right? Just basic things that you're supposed, that you, that I was doing for you that you're not doing for me. You don't pack my freaking lunch now that I'm the one, I'm the breadwinner now. You're not packing my lunch. You don't get up out of the bed to fix me no freaking breakfast. No, nothing like that. Not even to say, let me reciprocate what this nigga was doing for me. Nothing. To give you guys an example, I remember when it, because at the time we didn't, we, I didn't have a car. She, she, she didn't have a car because she lost her damn car because she can't pay for it. Right? I didn't have a car because I just, started to start to come into some money there's more important things i can take public transportation it's not an issue right at that time right so as i said to give you guys an example of how 
deluded this person was. Right? I remember one time I said to her, are you going to cook dinner tonight? Can I come home and expect something? She's like, listen, there's nothing here for me to cook. I'm like, okay, no problem. I will leave my bank card with you. You know the pin. Kid, couple of, a couple of, of blocks away, call your mom something, do something, figure it out. Can you go and get some groceries and bring it back? And cook something. She said okay. I left my card. Do you know. That I came back that evening. I think I got home at like 9. Or like 9.30 or something like that. There was nothing in the house to eat. I'm starving. My bank card is the same place I left it. I did not even say a word to her when I got in the house. I just took up my bank card and I walked. I think the supermarket was about, I want to say about three to four miles. And I got my groceries and I walked back to my place. And I cooked myself some food. And I just went to bed. Just went to bed. What am I going to argue for? To talk about the obvious? That is when I realized I was starting to change and really seeing this woman for who she was. This woman was not, she didn't love me. Period. Not even a little bit. Not even to say, let me oblige him a little bit not even a little bit so so yeah man so that was the turning point for me where things where after that things just went downward spiral for like a year where it was just it was constant arguing arguing like pretty much people next door would hear us argue and it just got to the point where I, I still was trying to fight. As I tell you guys, I was fighting for his marriage. I was fighting for it. Because I still loved her. And the situation got to the point where I said to her. One evening I came home. This was the, this was the ending point. Right? This was the ending point where I was like. I came home one day and she was talking about something, some mundane, stupid ass shit about some, some, some people or whatever. And I was like, I looked at her dead in the eyes and I said to her, I don't care. And she's like, what do you mean you don't care? I'm like, that's what I said. I don't care because I just didn't care because our freaking relationship is falling apart and you're telling me about some stupid ass shit I don't want to hear about? No. I don't care. So I was sitting beside her. She slapped me in the face. Whoop! And I said to, I looked at her again and I said, I don't care. And she slapped me again. I got up. And I said to her, I am going to my sister's house for a couple of days. When I get back, I don't want to see you here. If you're here, I am going to call the police and report you for abuse. And furthermore, expect me to file a divorce. At that point, as a matter of fact, at that, at that point, I had a job to do overseas and I had to go do the job. So I couldn't file for divorce while I had that. I had to wait until I get back to file for divorce. So she preempted everything. I had two rules in my relationship with her and with any relationship that I have, I have two rules. Now I have a lot more, but at that point I only had two rules. 
that you do not cross the line and that's don't cheat on me and do not put your hands on me out of anger. Those are my two rule breakers. If you do, you break any of those rules, our relationship is over. I'm done. I've given up. There's no coming back from it. I don't forgive those two things in a relationship. Maybe after the fact, I forgive you as a person. But after that, I can't trust you. I, I can't trust you. If I stay, you're going to feel like that shit can happen again. I'm just saying. But as I said before, right? So that was it. I went to St. Kitts to do the job. And stuff happened in St. Kitts. I don't want to bring that stuff up. Stuff happened while I was in St. Kitts. She, she, just to give you guys a gist of it, um, she knew all my Facebook, pa my all my face, my passwords for my social medias and stuff like that. And she basically went on all of my Facebook with my Facebook and all my social medias, my social medias, and basically copy and and just wrote a bunch of shit on my pages and shit like that about what was going down and made herself out to be the victim on my profiles right i was livid and i was also locked out of my out of my accounts so she did that i didn't know about it because i wasn't sent kids i'm you know i'm not really into social media like that so my little sister was the one that called me because I was staying in contact with my family while I was in St. Kitts. So they tell me, you don't know what's going on. I'm seeing all of this stuff on your pages and stuff like that. You don't know what's going on. I'm like, I don't know. I'm in St. Kitts. I'm trying to enjoy my damn self, finish the job early so I can have a little bit of vacation before I head back to the States. You know what I'm saying? And it was terrible. I was going to go off the hinges when I got back. And my mom said, listen. You're planning to divorce this girl. Don't do nothing stupid. So. I didn't do anything. I just came back. Got a lawyer. She filed for divorce. I basically was served with paper, with, with divorce papers when I got back. Um, And I was like, okay, no problem. You did it. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, she's that type of person where she wants to be in control. She was asking for a bunch of stuff. And my lawyer was like, come again. Because <laughs> she didn't have anybody to represent her. But my lawyer was looking at that stuff like, this girl is, she crazy. Where in what world does she think she's going to get this? You know what I'm saying? That's why, I, that's why I tell people now that I was one of those guys that was stupid enough to be like, oh, oh, you know, if we're in love, there's no need for prenup. Get that prenup, man. I'm going to tell you guys right now, get that prenup. If you get married, get that prenup. These women out here, they're trifling. Okay? They'll tell you one thing when you get married to them. Oh, I don't want nothing from you. What are you talking about? We both broke getting in. What do you think I'm going to want from you when we get, if we do get divorced? They'll say all of that stuff. But trust me, when that divorce comes up, if it does, I'm not wishing this on anyone. But when that divorce comes up, they gonna want something because they feel like they're owed and they're entitled to something. OK, and the system is not made for you. It does not favor men. It doesn't favor us. So make sure you get that prenup. OK. Um, the things that she wanted, she couldn't have. And one of the things that really saved me was because she was for most of the relationship, she was the um for most of the years that we were together we, the time that we spent together not including the time that we were apart the time that we spent with each other for most of that time she was the breadwinner she was the one that was bringing so if anything my lawyer looked at her and was like he don't want nothing from you and you're lucky because if you wanted because he told me i could get alimony because i wasn't the breadwinner for most of the time that we spent together. So he could ask, but he's not asking. All he wants is just a clean split and to get back to, to his single life. Because I told him, I'm like, listen, when we go to these hearings, I'm not saying anything. It's all on you. 
because I don't want to open my mouth. Because if I open my mouth, it might not close. Because you don't understand how livid I am at this person. Okay, so he said, ah, I handle it, don't worry about it. And he handled it. So I got a divorce, clean cut. Um, The only thing I paid for was there was a bed that we bought specifically. But that was way before that. When we were moving into the apartment, her mom had helped us to... um to pay for a, a bed, bed set. So the mom wanted me to pay for the bed set because I still had it, right? After she, when she moved in with me, she brought the bed because the bed was basically the mattress. I sh the mattress, I should say. The mattress was was basically, uh, we bought it specifically because of me, right? The, the type of mattress that we bought was specifically to me. Um, so I wanted to keep the mattress. So... Because I wanted to keep the mattress, I just kept the bed set, and she wanted me to pay for it, so I paid for it. I was like, whatever. I'll pay them for it. It's no big deal. Even though it's a whole old-ass bed, we both used it. I say, you know what? Because I wanted a bed, and it was mostly for me, I'll pay for it. No big deal. So they got that money, and that was it. She wanted alimony. She wanted all of these things, and my lawyer shut all of it down. So... As I said, there's plenty more that I could tell you guys about this marriage, but we're going on an hour, 20 minutes, like a damn movie right now, right? The, I could tell you guys so much more about this relationship. And the reason why I went through that marriage has been a while since I've wanted to tell this story. And the reason why I'm telling this story now is because there's so many guys out there, so many men out there that are seeking relationship advice. If they should get married, you know what I'm saying? Does the system favor them? You know what I'm saying? A lot of guys are going red pill now. You know what I'm saying? You know, there's this new thing called MGTOW. Well, it's not really new, but it's getting popularity around now. You know what I'm saying? The MGTOW men go in their own way and stuff like that, which I've studied up on and stuff like that. And I like it. I, I like how men are really catching on to what's really going on with women out here. And some of the times, you you, you know, and, 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 it, and it's really have to do, like, I, I'm talking to you guys specifically about women over here in the West. Because I've been in other parts of the world, man. I've been in other parts of the world, and women really do not act so entitled as they do in the United States. This is, I don't want to say it's a United States thing because I, I do think that there are other countries that are like this or there are women are like this. But it just, it, it, it's just on another level in this country. You know what I'm saying? And I know there's a few women that watch me and I know most of the women that watch my content here, they're not really from the U.S. You know what I'm saying? They're not really from the U.S. and they agree with a lot of the things that I say. So I'm telling you guys this, I am not a person out here scorning women or anything like that. Like I still love my woman, I still date women, you know what I'm saying? I still have a girl, but she understands what she's doing. And that's one of the mistakes that we make as men too, is not saying what we want. Be candid, be brutally honest. If a woman cannot handle that about you as a man. You are putting yourself out here to be slaughtered. I'm telling you guys this, man. You are putting yourself out here to be slaughtered. When women smell blood in the water, they fucking attack. And they do it so subtle and so nice with a smile. You will never see that shit coming. I've been in relationships after the fact, after my marriage, I've been through it. I've been through relationships where they just can't handle the fact that I'm just different now because they want to have their own way and I won't allow them to have their own way. No. You need to understand as a man that you are the prize. You get what I'm saying? 
Most women do not bring much to relationships. They act like they do, but they don't. They don't bring much, but they act like they're bringing a ton of stuff to the table. They want you to be this, that, and the third, right? They want you to, they want you to be everything and them to just be beautiful and have a vagina, right? I've dated successful women. I've dated women who don't have nothing. And when I tell you that the, the similarity, there's the difference is slim to none. It is slim to none. You get what I'm saying? I've dated women that are more successful than me. Right? Where at some point they feel like they're dating down. I'm like, who the fuck do you think you are talking about you dating down? So when I'm more successful than a woman, why is it that I can't say I'm dating down? Hmm? You want to explain that to me? What kind of double standard bull crap is that? You're dating down because you're more successful than me. And, 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 and success is relative anyways. Success is relative. You get what I'm saying? As successful as I, as I am, I've dated women that made more money than me since my marriage. And they act so condescending. And when you try to let them know, listen, I am the man, not you. They want to get all bitchy about stuff. Listen, man. Know who you are as a man. Stand up. Know who you are. Don't let anybody or anything come into the come in the way of helping you to understand that you are a man. Un read up on it. Check out MGTOW. Check out um you know what I'm saying? Check out, there's tons of channels on YouTube that talk about this stuff that, that are helping men to wise up. And as I said, it's not necessarily I'm trying to promote that stuff or anything like that, like overactively, because that's not, that's not really what I'm about on this channel. But men really need to come. Let me tell you something, man. I've made so many of my guy friends lives better just by telling them you need you need, you need to be more assertive about who you are. And you'll be more sexy to women. That's the crazy thing about it too. You'll come off so much more sexy to women when you're assertive, but they act like it's not in their nature to be submissive to our nature. It's in their nature. They're just fighting it so hard they can't see past their fucking nose. I'm just, I'm just saying, man. But, you know, as I said before, I don't want to go too much past a hour and a half here. Because most of you guys are not going to sit here for an hour and a half and listen to this, John. But anyways, you guys know my story. So if I should leave you guys with some encouraging words, um, men and women out there, I want... Let me talk to my women for a little bit here. For women, I want you to understand that don't try to, to belittle your guy and be condescending. The number one thing that men want is respect. That's it. Respect. That's it. Respect. And when I said it may, it, it may sound simple, but it's it. It's very hard for certain women to respect their men because, because society is telling them something different. I'm all for women empowerment. I'm all for all of that stuff. You guys want equal pay. All of this. I'm all for it. You know what I'm saying? I'm all for that stuff. But when it comes on to relationship. You need to understand who your man is, who he's supposed to be. You are not there to build your man up if he's not already, if he's not already built, 
you chose the wrong one. You're not there. You Women shouldn't be out here getting science projects. You should be getting into relationships with people, with guys who already know what they want. They're established. Don't be going out with children and be calling them men. And then when you become so controlling and then when, when they demand respect, guess what? You lose interest because that's not what you're there for. You took him up as a project in the first place. So when that project is built up now and now he starts to assert himself, you're going to feel left out. You're going to feel like, oh, job well done. Let's move on to the next project. If you're that type of woman, stop messing around with people's emotions, man. Listen. I don't have no issues when it comes when it comes on to women out there and you're doing your thing. As I said, respect your men. Show him respect. Adore him. Women don't understand that if you do these things, a man will move heaven and hurt for you. He will. And it's not even on a on a Fuck boy kind of situation. Like a real man. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, most men they they not they don't wanna get married anymore. Marriage rates are down. Divorce rate is up. Right? These things are happening for a reason. And we gotta acknowledge that. We can't just Throw out facts for feelings. We got to understand facts. Marriage doesn't favor men. That's why a lot of men are not getting married anymore. Yes, they would love to be in a, in, in, in a uh, you know what I'm saying, a relationship, a long-term relationship. Yes, they would. But when you bring up the subject of marriage... You know, nowadays we're asking, what's the benefits? <laughs> what are the benefits? Like, let's just be honest, man. Like, what's the benefits here? Because in America, maybe you could go get married in another country, maybe different. But in America, there's not much. I'm going to be honest. It doesn't really favor the man to get married. The exclusivity, that's pretty much all you get out of a marriage these days as a man is the exclusivity to, to claim that this woman is yours. Because if any other mishap, women are filing divorce today for the silliest things, okay? And they're getting millions. Millions. Dudes are out here going broke from stuff that they've built for themselves before marriage and losing it all to their wife, to their ex-wives because they had no prenup. Businesses that they've built before they got married, they lose it all. This is getting crazy. You understand what I'm saying? So that was my, my crazy story, man. And if I should give my men a little bit more um advice i would tell you guys man to just just be careful of what you put in your 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 thing in just be careful out there man because you know what i'm saying you have women out here trying trying to trap trap guys into relationships you know what i'm saying by holding you down you know what i'm talking about you know exactly what I'm talking about. But anyways, man, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you watch this entire video, if you watch this entire video, let me know in the comment section if you watch the entire thing. I know it's a little bit long, but it's a lot to stuff into an hour, in a, into a hour and a half. There's still a lot of stuff I wish I could talk about. I wish I had a podcast, right? I wish I had a podcast to, to just talk about this stuff and you guys could just listen to this and whatever, but... This was just a solid story I wanted to tell. As I said, I was telling it off the dome of the stuff that I remember and I believe that was the biggest impacts on my marriage and why it ended. You know what I'm saying? And as I said, this is just from my perspective. 
You know what I'm saying? Maybe if she should tell her story, it would be something totally different. Um, but she would tell you that these things were happening. If she would be truthful, she will tell you that these things were happening. Right. Um, so it's, I'm not telling you guys anything that didn't happen as a, and you know, I always tell people I was not the greatest husband in the world to her, but I did try. I tried to be, and I, I, I'm telling you a hundred percent straight up. As honest as I could tell you, I know for a fact that I tried to be a good husband to this woman. As hard as I could try to maintain the relationship and control stress and with not having anyone to talk to about it. Because my mom, after a while, she didn't want to hear about it. My sister, after a while, she didn't want to hear about it. So I couldn't talk to anyone about it. And as I said, I was kind of forced to not talk to anyone about it in a way. So... I thank you guys so much if you stay throughout this whole video. Hopefully you learn something from what I said and you'll be more cautious about your choices when it comes on to relationships because I think everybody should be cautious, both men and women, because they are some traveling men out there too. There are men out there that don't give a shit about your feelings. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And they just want to fuck you over if you want to be blunt. You know what I'm saying? So I know I probably cussed a lot during this video but i don't care anymore whatever demonetize at youtube whatever i don't care anyways thank you guys so much for tuning in as always man if you if you watch this video schedule things will come back on the channel next week because i'm busy for the entire weekend so next week before you see anything else on the channel there's some stuff earlier in the week when i got back but i got busy trying to catch up with the things that i was supposed to do last week um so Hopefully you guys enjoy the content when it comes out next week. We get back to business. There's some new stuff that are going to new stuff that is going to be implemented on the channel. Cause I'm thinking about everybody that subscribed to the channel and we have to pay due. So I will be doing another update video to let you guys know about that. But for now, peace. <laughs>